galaxy is burning. Brother fights brother, and treason splits the Imperium of Man. This is the Age of Darkness. Welcome to the Remembrancer's Retreat, coming to you from within the depths of the Vengeful Spirit. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Remembrancer's Retreat. My name is Jesse. I'm here with Austin. Hey, we're in my fortress of nerditude, talking heresy. Yeah. Got a few dogs. That's okay. Yeah, there's a few dogs. There's a baby. I apologize. Um, <laughs> You've been busy. Yeah, I've, I've had things going on, like the baby. It's fine. He's already yeah. got his first Space Wolf model. <laughs> Raising him right. So, again, we are counting down the days to Heresy 2.0. God, it is... It, it's still just kind of like, is it true? It, are, are we actually getting a new Horus Heresy edition? Yeah, sometimes it's like, am I just dreaming? Do I need to pinch myself? Yeah, right? Turns out... World War Three. I don't know. Yeah. Turns out it was all the same edition all along, just a reprint. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Still wouldn't be mad about it if that box set came out. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so... Talking about new edition, just chatting with people online. People are excited, and there's a lot of new people that have not played Horus Heresy before that are starting to dip their toes in. And I'm excited for it because, yes. like, we we saw that uh, with Betrayal Cow from Burning a Prospero, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I got in Prospero or um, Kalth was first. Yeah, yeah. Kalth was the first box. That's when I really got into Heresy. Like, mm -hmm. I'd play. I had some Heresy models, but fuck, doing it all through Forge World, like. I was living in LA, yeah. technically below the poverty line. I was not <laughs> right. buying enough Marines to play Heresy. The box set came out and suddenly, ah, great success. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's all you needed, right? You got both of those and then suddenly, you know, do a little conversion, do a little horse trading, buy like one thing from Forge World, you're good to go. Yeah. And now, God, the model's coming out in this box. You don't even need to buy the one thing from Forge World. You You've got everything you could want. Buy, buy the upgrade kit. Buy a special and heavy weapon upgrade kit and live your life. Let's see. What do you want to get into? We can talk about it. <laughs> what do you want to get into, Aiden? Yeah. So it's the start of a new week. So there's only been a, one other uh, uh, Legion preview that came out. Yeah, but it's it's a good one. Yep. Talk directly. And, uh, turn that mic up. It's the face. There you go. Oh. There you go. I, I thought we were doing more of a 30s thing. No. <laughs> For, forgot. We're, we're no, high tech cost, now. Those cost extra. We're high tech now. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Got some World Eaters stuff. And they are nuts. They they real good. They real good. Yeah. I The more I see of these rules, the happier this whole edition makes me. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll start off with, um, I guess, one of their Legion rules. Yeah. Violence Incarnate. On any turn in which a unit with this special rule makes a successful charge, it gains plus one attack for the remainder of that turn in addition to any other bonuses, even if that charge is considered a disordered charge. So they get plus two attacks to the charge, mm -hmm. which is just good on the face of it. Sure. But it's plus one attack for the remainder of that turn. Yeah. So if you go first, you could potentially be swinging – two attacks on your opponent's turn on their fight phase. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, your world eaters. So that's just always going to be good. Like mm -hmm. no, no downside. If you could fight a uh, combat phase in the shooting phase, you do it like just <laughs> straight winning. I like it a lot, which turns out apparently you can with the savage tide. So <laughs> this is their advanced reaction. And it may be used once per battle during the opposing player's shooting phase when an enemy unit declares a shooting attack targeting a friendly unit with the infantry unit type under the reactive player's control with the World Eater special rule. All models in the reacting unit gain Feel No Pain 5 up against all wounds inflicted as part of the shooting attack that triggered this reaction. And if the reacting unit already has a version of Feel No Pain, then it does not stack or increase, but they may choose to use any one of the Feel No Pain X special rules available to them. And once the shooting attack has been completely resolved, the reacting unit may make a charge, following all the normal attacks for charging, targeting the enemy unit that made the shooting attack. 
The enemy unit may not make a reaction to this charge, which I find hilarious. That is amazing. It does seem to be kind of the standard uh, for these really fancy advanced reactions is mm -hmm. it, the enemy doesn't get to like, ha ha, try and one-up you. They just right. got to deal with it. Yeah, it, it um, makes sense. I mean, they already shot at you. Yeah, it's their turn. They don't yeah. need to go more. Yeah. Like deal with it. Um, but it just sounds pure world eater. It is. It's really good. And I love, I love that feel no pain five up, right? It is like we, we were talking about this in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as good as some of the other feel no pain gimmicks world eaters could do mm -hmm. 1.0. Like they can get a three up feel no pain with the right combination of characters and stuff. Yeah. Um, but if for some reason they do have a more enhanced feel no pain, they can still take that. Yes. And it's also just any infantry unit. Yeah. So things that normally can't get access to apothecaries, it's kind of hard, like terminators or something like that. Mm -hmm. They can jump in on this. Um, it it's just really nice. Yeah. But that's and it's really that's not the ice. That's the icing on the cake, right? This mm -hmm. feel no pain against all the shooting is just icing on the cake. The real win is that once you've resolved the shooting attack, which you're more resilient against, they now get to charge. Yeah. <laughs> Which is exactly what a world leader wants to be doing. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Like, imagine, imagine, if you will, you have a world leader's army. Or imagine Caro doing this to you yeah. in the not too too distant future, right? She's yeah. got a world leader's army. <laughs> Caro has her, what's what's their elite Terminator unit? Uh, the Red Butchers. Yeah. Caro has her some Red Butchers. And let's say she's got a Warmonger with them to give them all deep strike. If they're around this edition. If Warmongers yeah. are around this edition. But let's or say- let's just put them in a Spartan. Just not even in a Spartan. <laughs> they just deep strike, right? So yeah. they're there. Yeah. Because uh, they're there. Yeah. You, you can't get in combat with them. Right? You can't. You don't. Even Death Sworn are like, ah, maybe I don't want to. Um, so all you have to do is shoot them. But they're right there. Mm -hmm. So like they get a five up feel no pain, which- I don't know in this edition, will you be able to take an invul save and a field of pain? Doesn't matter. The important thing is they're right beside you and you shot them. So now they get to charge you. Well. Jesse's holding up his hand like he's deep in thought. Well, they would be deep striking on their turn. Yes. You would be shooting them on your turn. Yeah. They deep strike in. Mm-hmm. And then you shoot them. Oh, for the, uh, inner, yeah, but that's for the shooting phase though. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Like oh, they come, okay. they come down, yeah. right? They, uh -huh. they do whatever horrible thing they're going to do to you mm -hmm. in that deep striking turn, but they're still in the middle of your army. Right. Right. So anything that's going to be shooting at them in their shooting phase will get charged. Yeah. I you, see what you're saying. You now yeah, yeah. no longer, you can almost conga line it I like see. you could back in like third edition, right? Where you kill a unit and then immediately jump to something else. These guys were going to come down, kill something. Right. We are in the age now where Terminators have two wounds, so. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That whatever huge blob of Terminators you have probably will survive a turn or two. Yeah. Like if you take a 10-man squad of Terminators, you know, somebody in Cataphracty, you get a four-up invul, mm -hmm. you get a five-up feel no pain. Eh, let, okay, fine. Shoot at me with literally anything to hand. Yeah. I didn't think about Terminators. I was just thinking like assault squads of jetpacks getting their bonus to charge. And that's the other thing, yeah. right? Because we've seen... Mm -hmm. We've seen the cheat sheet. The yeah. faster you go, the further you can charge. <laughs> right. Which I can love. Mm -hmm. Jesse will fail zero two in, three inch charges this edition. Everybody gets a guarantee. Everybody gets a jetpack. <laughs> everybody gets a jetpack. <laughs> um yeah, it's I, I really like this. It's super fluffy. And honestly, I also think it's fluffy that the feel no pain doesn't stack. Right? Because yeah. this is just them losing their goddamn minds. Right. This isn't them, like, trying to be bros. Oh, hey, you got shot in the arm. Let me, like, bandage you up. That's not what's happening here. Here, brother. Like, <laughs> it's not how world eaters roll. They're just going to, like, grit their teeth. Yeah. And if you blow their arm off, they're just going to pick that arm up and beat you to death with the chainsaw it still won't put down. Uh, yeah, I, I like it so much. And we, like, oh, God, it's, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Cause I think the, the other way I could have seen it going is if they'd given them like, oh, it's a feel, feel no pain that you can stack onto your existing feel no pain, but it would probably have been a six up at that point. Cause that's kind of the normal stacking yeah. thing is like, oh, you get the shittiest version of it, but you, but it stacks. So it's fine. 
but this like a five up feel no pain is good enough that you don't feel the need to like do anything to it. Like it'll stand on its own, right? Yeah. A third of the time you live. So it just, it just makes me very happy. This whole thing. Um, not as happy though as this next one, which is really for the world leaders players, right? It's that savage mm -hmm. fervor. Any model with the Legion as Astartes world leader special rule with a chain sword may exchange the chain sword for a chain axe for no additional cost in points, which I feel like was already a thing. I believe so. Yeah. Um, however, comma, that doesn't make it less good. Like, yeah. how upset would the would the World Eaters players have been if that rule went away, right? Yeah, I'm not sure what Chain Axes do in this next edition, but I'm imagine it's probably still better than a Chain Sword. Yeah, it's going to be better than a Chain Sword, and that's all you really need to know, that you can do it for free. Yeah. Although now with, like, Chain Bayonets and whatnot, like, maybe there's a reason to not take a Chain Sword. I mean, this, but, yeah. this guy, scroll, scrolling down through the article, this guy has a Chain Bayonet. I think Chain Swords now, uh, if I remember the, uh, the starter kit... Uh, unit type for uh, tacticals is the chain swords are now like five points a piece as opposed to the, the uh. bayonets are cheaper but the chain sword is more expensive all right all right so it's the pricey upgrade so pricey and then but even more pricey but you get that chain axe for free mm -hmm. which is delightful mm. yeah and I don't like there's been I, I may have missed a couple of of these reading through the rules but there hasn't been one that i've been like hugely disappointed in like there are some that seem better than others not really I, knowing how the new edition works i still don't know how i feel about the blood angels one yeah because i'm still i'm still scratching my head on that one which i don't know if you looked at it too much so what, i'm kind of backtracking here where i can pull it up here in a second but so for night lords they get a plus one to their rolls for wounding if they outnumber. They're yeah, I, I did see that super like that, super uh, fluffy. Blood Angels, when they successfully charge, require one less number to wound when they successfully charge. All right, and the Night Lord thing is? You get a plus one to your roll to wound. Blood Angels require one less number to wound on a charge. You know, it might it might have something to do with how uh, bonuses kick in this edition. Potentially, I think that was uh, what someone mentioned on Discord. I'd still have to. It might be might be onto something there, because like things like rending and stuff. I don't know if this edition will call out whether or not. Yeah, if you get that plus one, yeah, to turn your five to a six, does that trigger the rending? Yeah, we don't know. Is it only natural rolls that yeah. cause that thing? And then, how would that interact? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Still don't know, but we'll find out. I'm we'll sure. find out. We'll find There's out soon, a, Jesse. There has to be a reason. Find out soon. There has to be a reason. The gods <laughs> will provide. So, somebody, somebody knows. They're out there. They're out there. Whoever you are, if you're listening, God tell me. <laughs> and if not, I'm sure an FAQ will be right around the corner. Exactly. Exactly. For all the people that just want to pick apart every little thing, yeah. like but us. Think, <laughs> yeah. But that means, like... Pretty much besides that, all the rules have been really cool. Yeah, they've all been like very thematic on point of and liking just uh, – it's got me like buying basing material for a Space Wolf Army I don't own yet mm -hmm. uh, for models that aren't out yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like models I haven't even seen a preview for. Like I've got an entire like Space Wolf jet bike army in my head and I just need plastic jet bikes. <laughs> But this war, this uh, world eater special uh, reaction is just so cool. Oh yeah, it's it's so cinematic. You know, like yeah. this group, like this squadron going in, just mowing down, just blasting world eaters. The dust settles. You know, they shrug it off, and then they go just tear them to them. Yeah, like you, like <laughs> you unloaded the magazine, and uh, they're still there, except now they're right next to you, beating you to death with their free chain axe, and they're real angry. They're real angry boys. Um, oh, God. So to tie this back in with that violence incarnate is just any turn in which they make a successful charge to include the enemies. Yeah. So they're going to, you know, theoretically, they get that five up, feel no pain. Mm -hmm. They survive. They charge you back. And get a plus one. <laughs> oh, on get, your opponent's turn. Yeah. 
So, get a plus two. Yeah. And now even if your opponent went first, congratulations, you have it in your own turn. And also, BT dubs, real hope that wasn't an assault unit dumping bolt pistol fire into them, because <laughs> those guys now lost all their charge bonuses. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, this, this edition really puts a premium on two things, long-range firepower, right? Because mm -hmm. if you hit them 48 inches away with las cannons, you're not going to, nobody's going to trigger this, right? Mm -hmm. Well, probably. They're not going to get the good end of it if they do. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to have, I think, more dedicated assault units. Like, people are going to be dumping those bolt pistols for that second close combat weapon, finally, after <laughs> 30 years of <laughs> GW games, where everybody's like, I remember in, uh, like, the old... The old uh, Lost and Dam Codex. Mm. Like, you can give a guy a last pistol and a close combat weapon or two close combat weapons. <laughs> and, it just, like, why? A last pistol counts as a close combat weapon. It doesn't fucking matter. I'm going to shoot the guy with my shitty flashlight. <laughs> now, if I shoot the guy with the shitty flashlight, there is a non-zero chance he will just either, A, shoot me back with his actual gun <laughs> <laughs> or run over and beat me to death. It's fantastic. Which I mentioned this before, but a while back ago, and I think it was with you, but with these new reactions and things, it feels very more and more closer to an actual historical war game. Yeah. Yeah. Like the advance reaction or the fallback reaction. Yeah. And the return it, fire. It just really gives a sense of like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. But, yeah. Because I've so. Because we were playing what? Altar of Freedom? Yeah, Ultra Freedom yeah. was the, <laughs> the, the six war. mil Civil War. Yeah. American Civil War. American <laughs> Civil War. It's true. <laughs> Either the first one or the second one, depending on if you're British or not. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, just moving those little units around and reacting to people getting close to you and being able to like shoot them away from you. Or yeah, it also reminds me a lot, um, which is rules I'm just like, starting to play a British Grenadier, which is the same thing, right? Mm. You write down your orders of like, oh, this brigade's going to go to this hill. Mm -hmm. And, oh, fuck, those guys came close. Well, here's my reaction or here's my falling back. Not because the enemy made me, but because I think that's just a smart thing to do in the moment. Yeah. Um, which I love because there's, and it allows for recovery, mm -hmm. right? Because we've all done that, right? We've all been, oh, it's my movement phase. I'm moving my like, you know, 80 models across the table trying to do a good plan. And then the shooting phase comes around and like, those guys are effing dead and I'm a, <laughs> fuck, I killed one of them. Yeah. Why, why are my guys so close? Why did I think that was a good idea? And like, so now, you know, in your turn, I can go, oh, you're coming closer to me. I'm a, I'm a backup now. Like I, I made a mistake. There's a, there's a tactical error. <laughs> we're we're going to get away. Um, maybe Copa, maybe Copa. yeah, like, just, or maybe it becomes like a bait, right? Like you can bait people. Oh yeah, those, mm. I could charge the hell out of those guys. All right, let's move closer. <laughs> oh, Jesse's Jesse's running away with those guys now, and now my dudes are you know out of cover, yeah. right? And he's just going to mow me down with what I can only assume is heretical high energy weapons of some sort, possibly an artificial intelligence. The, the good stuff. Who knows what Jesse's got in his dirty <laughs> bag of emperor approved tricks. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to getting this edition and playing games because it is a much more, I guess, modern feel to it. Mm -hmm. Cause I know a lot of people, um, and it kind of goes, I don't know, much about Age of Sigmar anymore as far as gameplay goes, but 40K, Heresy 1.0, because it is an I go, you go system mm -hmm. rather than alternating activation, which is the vast majority of games now. Like yeah. a lot of alternating activation. This this gives you a nice flavor of that while still keeping kind of the roots. Right? Mm -hmm. I know that was a one of the concerns people had and they were like, not me, because I wanted it to stay seventh. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people that were more like, oh, they should modernize it and like change it and like make it more I go, you go, like more interactive. Yeah. And this is a nice, like, they met both of us halfway. Yeah. yeah. I heard there was some of that discussion comparing it to like, a, as far as the reactions go to Age of Sigmar, to the latest edition, which I, I have no clue. Yeah. But man. Yeah. hey, if, if any of our, uh, any of our listeners play both of these games, uh, let us know. Yeah. 
how Wait. close they came. Because, uh, again, like I, I tried Age of Sigmar when it came out, and I think when it did its first big revamp after it came out, mm-hmm. and it just didn't feel like the game for me. Gotcha. Um, but I really like reactions, mm-hmm. and that might be enough to get me to – I mean, I'm still bringing my square base stuff. <laughs> it's not enough to make me buy any <laughs> fantasy stuff on a round base yet. However, comma, yeah. I'd give it a go. Uh, speaking of uh, square bases and stuff, one thing we noticed in the rules – from our last episode, you weren't here. That uh, dangerous terrain checks, auto kill. <laughs> you fail dangerous terrain check, you're dead unless you have an invuln save. That's amazing. Yeah, one, and I love that they brought it back to that. Yeah, because some of the mm-hmm. like it's like an armor save or something like that. Like, uh, well, I've got a two up armor save. Fuck, uh, nobody cares. Right, just wasting uh, die rolling. I know that from the uh, white scars. Mentioning that their skilled rider gives them a four up invuln save against dangerous train checks, which if you got a three up armor save, why would you care about? Why would you need that? Yeah. Well, because die in a fire, Mm -hmm. you flew into a wall instead of the window. (laughs) Now you're just not coming back. So yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Fun bit. Hopefully we'll get some more rules here pretty soon. Fingers crossed. I know. Right. And can I just say how nice it is? Right. Like over this past summer. Oh, like the exemplary battles were great. Yeah. They were fun. They mm-hmm. were cool. We were getting like one a month, one every couple of months. Yeah. Like it was a sad time to be people that talk about heresy on the internet because <laughs> there just wasn't a lot of heresy to talk about. Yeah. There was a holding pattern for sure last and, year. And now you guys recorded, what, two days ago? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys recorded on a Saturday. And we still haven't talked about everything that, you know. Yeah, we still Warham- have stuff. That Warhammer itself had been talking about. It's like, yeah. this is unusual. What other stuff do you want to talk about, Jesse? <laughs> what more stuff do we have to talk about? I don't know, dude. Do you want to talk about Mark Six Beaks? <laughs> I'll talk about Beakies all day long. My second least favorite mark of armor. However. <laughs> <laughs> However, it's in plastic and it's beautiful. It's in plastic and it's gorgeous. And I'm getting, <sighs> I don't know how many, at least 10. Certainly my reconnaissance squad is going to be a Mark VI. Mm-hmm. Presumably whenever they do plastic bikes and or jet bikes, those will be Mark VI. So yeah, I'll have a whole Mark VI army, uh, which is fun. It's- yeah. I'm looking forward to them. They're not sure how I'm going to deal with the uh, the shoulder pads. Ah, speaking of shoulder pads, let's, have you had a chance to take a look at the sprues? Uh, yeah. So I, I looked at some of the sprues um, and I – so – I'm going to give, I'm sure Will probably mentioned how to put these shoulder pads. To, no, you haven't talked about them at all, have you? No. All right. No. So this is a public service announcement. Okay. Um, the Mark VI shoulder pads come in two pieces. Mm-hmm. They come in two pieces for the very, like, legitimate reason of that's the only way to get good studs on a curved surface yeah. for an injection mold plastic. Will, Will did mention that, yes. So Will mentioned that. Good. We have seen in photos that sometimes there's a bit of a gap in the models. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, you're sitting there with your glue and you're Mm -hmm. putting 60 of these guys together. Sometimes it just doesn't go together clean, right? I I got a little frustrated with my Zaphon model. Yeah. That that double shoulder pad was like, Mm -hmm. I I got big hands. (laughs) Right. And half of a shoulder pad on a Space Marine is pretty tiny. It is. You're not going to pick up the tweezers. You're not going to go for the old man, like, focus goggles, a little magnifying glass. Super glue all over my fingers. Jesse is still in his 30s, for God's sake. He's not going (laughs) to go to the the headlamp magnifying glass. No. What you do, cut up some sprue, get um, the thin thin plastic glue, Mm -hmm. um, like the Tamiya stuff works really well. And put some of the sprue in that. It'll melt down the sprue and you'll get this kind of gloppy eh, to it. Use that when you're putting the shoulder pads together and it'll melt everything and it'll get rid of that line. Mm. Very clean. If there's a little that pops up, you just kind of with your finger or thumb or, you know. Okay. If you're classy and care about your skin, I guess like a paper towel or something. I have no idea. Okay. I, I lick them. <laughs> Don't yes. lick them. The second PSA, <laughs> don't lick plastic glue. Um, <laughs> don't but eat that'll handle it, and it's not a okay. – like once, once you know the trick, which is put some sprue in there, 
it's a super easy fix. It, it doesn't even feel like a problem anymore. It just becomes the way you put shoulder pads together. It's great. Gotcha. Um, and that works for anything that's got kind of a, any sort of gap. Like yeah. if you foobar something and you leave a little gap where you're trying to like reposition an arm and it's got that little chunk that mm-hmm, sticks mm-hmm. out, you can just put a little bit of this in there. Take care of that problem. It's like the old, um, you know, the liquid green stuff. I don't know if GW even makes it anymore. I don't know. The liquid green stuff. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I, I have no clue. I've yeah. never really had to use it lately, so. Um, but it's that. It's gap filler. Yeah, just a little bit of reused sprue. Yeah, and into full, your, full disclosure for yeah. those of you who don't trust me because you shouldn't, um, <laughs> this is Will's proven solution, and Will actually paints nice models. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So, yeah. Um, Good to know. I, I will definitely try to use that in the future here. Yeah. Um, so the rest of these sprues, the, uh, the rest of the Mark six kit, mm-hmm. um, pros and cons. This is probably yep. the first, not even disappointment, really. The first thing I'm not actively hugely thrilled about. Uh-huh. Um, so the, the kit for the Mark six Marines, you get the upgrades, kind of an upgrade sprue. It's got the, some bayonets on it yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And that's really cool. And then you get. Uh, the sprues of Tactical Marine looks like five Marines a mm-hmm. sprue, so you'll get you know. Yep, I sent you a link over there. That so tailofpainters dot com was like the first one to show it. Oh, delightful! And uh, they really beautiful, just rundown of all the different sprues and stuff, and high quality pictures. Delightful. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, this is actually the one I saw. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like you get the upgrades sprue right, and the basic yeah. tactical sprue. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of a bummer to me that the arms and le- or the torsos and legs are one piece. I mean, yeah. they're not quite. It's like torso and then a leg and a half, mm-hmm. and you got to fit the other greave in, presumably just because of how the model is sculpted. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, a little. Yeah, mixed mixed know. feelings. Yeah, but be honest, I look in hindsight at the models that I've made. And I really can't think of a time where my torso was twisted in such a freakish way that I would bother. <laughs> the biggest thing for me, though, is upgrades. Like, I enjoyed having the upgrade torsos and being able to slap those onto my characters and stuff. Yeah, like, that's that's a bit of a sad time. Um, I know these are bigger, so, like, presumably, I've got, I've got some Space Wolf torsos from Forge World. Mm-hmm. Presumably, these wouldn't really have looked right on these anyway. Like, there would have had to be some extra fiddling with to make it work. Yeah, hard to say. Um, the um, model isn't too terribly bigger than most it's not, of the other stuff. It's not. And it might be fine in the torso. Um, but it is a bit of, and again, like, I can't say it's, it's a bummer because I haven't seen the model. I think it's just that we're so used to, after years and years of just torso and legs, that's just how they, they work. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> having having said that, my, because like the bummer for, for those of you that, you know, are like us drinking their way through listening to this podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the bummer is it, it makes them a little less dynamic. So even though you're probably based on the photos going to be able to get some like variation in where the arms are yeah. at the end of the day, you have five dudes in the same five poses and you're going to have you know, 40, 200, 10, however many of them. So it'll be much easier to do duplicate stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a bummer, right? I think, I think the, unless you're new and don't, and you know, I think they're dynamic enough to where you can hide it pretty well. I think, I think so. Uh, and I was about to say, <laughs> I'm also the guy that does have a militia army where all the militia <laughs> infantry are the same leg and torso. And I've got 80 of them. And the only variance is where the laser rifles held. <laughs> and it's probably the favorite looking army i own yeah so (laughs) (laughs) i could just be sad for literally zero reason and again i'm not even sad about it yeah um because we're just games workshop simps as we know right apparently (laughs) i i do nothing but love on games workshop stuff um which if you told me from 2013 that boy would he be surprised um yeah it's just a solid a solid kit um but man, yeah, I hadn't even thought that the that the one piece leg and torso means the Legion upgrade kits probably aren't going to be doing torsos for Mark Six. Yeah, because we saw the uh, we'll side swipe into the uh, Imperial Fist upgrade kit that they revealed last Thursday, 
which was uh, heads and shoulder pads. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't even occur to me that like, I just, yeah. I was just like, oh yeah, that's coming out. And like the torso stuff will be out, yeah. you know, eventually. No, not for Mark no, six. Probably not for Mark six at all. But does yeah. that mean we'll make, might get bespoke tacticals? I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting. I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I certainly being, wouldn't expect something like that in plastic. Mm -hmm. um, from all the rumors we've been hearing, all the generic stuff is plastic, and then Forge World will still be doing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. But, um, God, but can I just say, and I, I know you guys probably beat this horse to death too, eh. um, that I love the fact that the shoulder pads and, I guess, helmets are now just upgrade things you buy. Mm -hmm. Like, they're not Forge World stuff. They're just straight... It did mention they're in resin. Oh, they are in resin. Yeah. Okay. Well, I take looked, it back the, a little bit. But then. the packaging looks like it would be right out of Games Workshop storefront. Yeah. Because I saw the packaging and was like, oh, that's really yeah, cool. That, I, I assumed it was plastic the way it looked. It's resin. I'm. But who knows? Apparently less excited. Uh, <laughs> but it is nice because I, I do love the bespoke shoulder pads. I am mm -hmm. not a decal guy. <laughs> And again, having said that, this whole I, new army, I'm going to try to be. Yeah. I go back and forth. I love the look of a good decal. But I, it's, See, it's a skill that I'm still slowly <laughs> learning to get to. I was about to say, I too love the look of a good decal. But, Unfortunately, I can't make a good decal. But you I, know that the time difference between me putting a decal on a shoulder pad and just gluing a shoulder pad onto the mm -hmm, model, mm -hmm. you know, got to weigh those pros and cons. Again, I've got, I think I've still got like 60 Mark II and three shoulder pads for Space Wolves. Yeah. And the Dark Angel shoulder pads look great. Oh, yeah, they really like, There's are. enough detail. Like, I've had some Iron Warriors ones, and they're they're okay, but they're a little too bulky for me. Mm. They kind of stick out weird. The Dark Angel ones are kind of swept and take over most of the shoulder pad. The, the Iron Warriors ones just kind of like, uh, the big old stamp right there. <laughs> Yeah, the Space Wolf ones I super enjoyed. Yeah. Of course, now I'm going to have all decal marines, so we'll see. We'll see how it works. Yeah. Um, uh, but back to the sprue, the yeah, um, yeah. the upgrade sprue on the tacticals. Finally, have a plastic nuncio vox, which is really cool. Got and it looks like like it's not even a bespoke, like it's not even a whole backpack. It's a thing that goes on the backpack, right. which I I weirdly like prefer. Um, because it's going to make converting it so much. Oh, easier yeah. like that bit <laughs> i do a lot of ink 28 type of stuff uh-huh i don't paint it to ink 28 standards because i physically incapable <laughs> uh, but i like a good <laughs> conversion and that's going to be awesome for it um what the the standard crest melta bombs some scrolls which i don't think we've seen in a 30k kit before yeah they're starting yep. to get a little Esoteric. A little esoteric here with the grim darkening of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then looks like the only weapon. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You do get the fist, claw, sword yep. options as far as uh, close combat weapons for your boss man, which mm -hmm. is exciting. Is that a melt bomb or is it just a cracker? Oh, no, it is a melt bomb, I think. Yeah, it's a melt bomb. Top left, yeah. Some of these I can't quite make out. It might be just parts of different weapons that. Yeah, or like a couple of them are turned around and you can't really tell. Yeah, I see the plasma uh, pistol. Augury scanner, yeah. Lots of bayonets. Lots of bayonets. Mm. And chain bayonets mm. on the main sprue. I love a good bayonet. Everybody that's ever listened to this podcast knows I love a good bayonet. <laughs> and so one of the militia armies that I've I've been saving up for um, is Warlord Games, Hanoverian Infantry. Uh, so they look... Kind of like Mordians, mm -hmm. right? For those of you that don't know your Napoleonic uniforms of 1811. Um, so they, they're they kind of Mordian looking. And I've been hoarding LAS rifles so I can put LAS rifle tips on the muskets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and their muskets have bayonets that are just like their historical models. So it's just kind of a little yeah. really skinny triangle, which is fine. However, comma, bayonets are now a thing like a bespoke thing mm -hmm. rules wise. And I feel like a lot of people are going to go for chain bayonet for maximum like grim darkness, yeah. which means it probably won't be hard for me to get my hands on about 150 of these regular bayonets. Probably not. And use them for this <laughs> freaking militia army that I'm just losing my entire mind over. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'd be fun. It'd be fun. But yeah, just looking at that times eight 
Like you get gonna, eight of those basic sprues and then the four good for HQ. Kit. God, what a big box. All right. So then we have the Contemptor. Keep scrolling down and that's a lot of little pieces. Ah, stop doing that. Yeah, that like fully posable Contemptor, what everybody has been begging for literally since since the plastic one came the out. The first Contemptor <laughs> came out and everyone was like, I've got one and it looks kind of static, but it's really cool. Plastic Contemptor. Look, and then you wanted I, a talent of three and you're like, ah, yeah. fuck, I got the same. I cut the leg and rotated the leg. 20 degrees. Hooray. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah. I've got two of them. One of them has a leg rotated 20 degrees and they are twinsies. No longer. Um, which is kind of funny. Mm. Um, Cause I feel like putting a torso and a leg as one model is very much a like nod to the people that are like new to the hobby. Yeah. Right. It's just one less step you have to do. Right. Mm-hmm. But this contemptor is full on like, ah, yeah, you make miniature war game models now, son. I hope I <laughs> yeah. hope you picked the right feet for the articulation of your ankle joint. <laughs> hope you I better lo- put that right leg on that right foot. I love it. I love it. Love everything about it because. Oh, that's so many Just pieces. imagine what Steven is going to do with this kit. He's going to make monsters again, out of it. Steven has, I think he said 39 dreadnoughts last, <laughs> last count. Um. <laughs> And it's only going to go up from there. But speaking of kits that make you lose your mind and hey, you're a, you're a grown up war gamer now. Mm. Plastic fucking Spartan. With six sprue of stuff. Six sprue of stuff. It's it takes not- six sprues to build this damn tank, yeah, which is phenomenal. And look, I, I'm saying look like the listeners can friggin' see what I'm doing. Um, but one of the things I really like about this kit is that it's got bespoke like Aquila and mm-hmm. Eye of Horus iconography. And that's all it is. Like it's not on a door. Mm-hmm. It's not even like, oh, hey, we made you one for each and you get like an extra door. Yeah, like Titan- I, I thought it was going to be like Titanicus, but yeah. no, they just, but they gave you nice bits that you can put on anything. And literally anything. And it's so good. Yep. Because, uh, yeah, like the Titanicus stuff, you get the Loyalist shoulder pads, the Traitor shoulder pads, you put the armor on, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, not so. And there's a bunch of them. Like, I'm looking at this one sprue, and I see four Eyes of Horus and four Imperial Double Eagles, three yeah. Imperial Double Eagles that you can just slap on. Whatever you any, feel like. Anything you want, right? You've got a nice building that you've acquired from mm-hmm. somewhere. Right, you want to upgrade that old Aegis defense line, make it a little sexier, mm-hmm. right? Because you've got eight of them. Because you you needed quad guns to make uh, proxy thunderbolts. <laughs> no reason why that analogy came into my head. <clears throat> Not a clue. Um, and again, just basic track. Yeah. No, no more Imperial Eagles going the wrong direction. Just flat track. Mark II, half of my, yeah, half of a Mark II guy. I do like a- All of you consider yourself subjected to a five-minute rant about how happy I am that this guy indicates there's going to be Plastic Mark II Marines. I've said it a oh, bunch. Dude. We just- There's a Mark II pointing hand. If you look over on the, le- on the far left on the sprue where it has the large uh, sides of the Spartan, look at the top middle. <gasps> there is a- Arm that makes pointing. me so happy. I find it weird that I actually, they just threw a few arms on this particular sprue because it's like, <laughs> shouldn't you be on the uh, the pental upgrades? But nope. nope, nope. Which speaking of, that is a sexy upgrade pental kit. It and has a dozer blade. How big a friggin' set of nerds we are that we're geeking out over the pental mount upgrade kit. It is great though. It's got a nice dozer blade. It's got a bunch of hatches. I feel like too many hatches. I don't see. You got, Extra hatches. Well, it's also the Spartan, which has three. There are two, five here. Well, it has, well, so you have the open ones. You have the closed ones. You might be able to actually. Eh, no, because some of those are the top hatches you put on top, right? And then. Yes. Then you have, so you have three here or four here that look like you could put a pental mounted weapon on. Yeah. And then one that looks like you can't. Yeah. One just closed. 
who knows now. And there's like another, it's, there's a lot of stuff. There's here. a lot of stuff going lot, on here. A lot to take in, but you got a multi melter, uh, heavy flamer, heavy bolter, hunter seeker, hunter seeker missile, some combi bolters, another heavy flamer, unless it's two of the half. I think it's, I think it's two halves yeah. probably my guess. But dude, oh, it's, uh, yeah. But yeah, also what kit. looks like a Volkite. Yeah. I see the Volkite in there. Volkite, Melta, Plasma. God, there's just, there's literally every. It's everything you want in there. Every weapon. And I do really like the doing mounted, that too. A pencil mounted plasma. Hell yes. Right. But it looks like from this and um, the Sikorin, mm -hmm. they're just as many extra weapons as they can sit in the sprue. Yeah. Right? Uh, I'm willing to bet this, uh, this is the pencil upgrade kit for all the new vehicles for Horus Heresy. I, I would agree. Because looking at the doors of the, like looking at the actual Spartan model, mm -hmm. there's not that many hatches on a Spartan. Like you're getting some extra hatches, which I'm curious. Congratulations, if that are, Necromunda players. Yeah. <laughs> Can't curious, have too many hatches. I'm curious if that uh, dozer blade actually works on the Spartan. Oh, you're right. If this is a kit for like the rhinos and predators and stuff, that would be wildly too small. Yeah. But no, no, who knows? I mean, why would you, can you put a dozer blade in a Spartan? It's I mean, got an assault ramp. That comes down in the front. Right, right. But I thought you could take one as part of the rules. People used to put all the, um, I do the side the, shovels. The side shovel ones, yeah. Which actually, no. So the uh, the new Kratos has that ginormous blade on the yeah. front that I love so much. Uh, but yeah, yeah, then it has the, uh, the quad las cannons. Ah, it's so good. Which that's pretty much all your Spartan needs anyway. I wish there was a little bit more delineation between uh, quad las cannons and the laser destroyers, but you don't see enough of that. You see yeah. one of the, I, w I wish we had that because we have it on the Vindicator, if I remember right. I've got two of them right behind you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They are my favorite, my darlings. It'd be great to see those on the Spartan too. Oh, uh, you can just upgrade the laser destroyer array. I mean, you Hilarious. could, you could in the, in the game. Huh? So we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Things might have changed, but that is a lot of Laz Cannon. I'm excited for it. Yeah, we're just geeking out and just staring at these sprues and just imagining them in our hands. Yep. And then you have 10 of the plastic cataphracty terminators, which who, <laughs> who would have thought that getting 10 cataphracty terminators in a starter box is now the thing that we're like, eh, yeah, you get 10 of them. Yeah. It's the exact same kit as before. But still. When you get your hands on 10 Terminators in a kit, it's it's still a good feeling. I don't care who you are. <laughs> well, and again, like, this is such a good starter kit just for, like, the community. The value is stupid incredible. Yeah. Like I, I was telling you, the, the rumors going around England is that it'll be 180 pounds. What that'll mean in U.S. dollars, I don't know because GW doesn't believe in the actual exchange rate. Mm -hmm. Um it's what feels right. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like they took the exchange rate from like 2003 and just like, yeah, this is where we're at. Huh. We're not going to bother with figuring it out. If it's good for us, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. <laughs> 300. Um, but that's a real good deal. And like, not as good for new players, but they're like, it's cheap enough mm -hmm. that even if you're somebody like me, I'm not a big Terminator guy. I'd rather have more power armor dudes. Yeah. It's still a good enough deal that I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm only going to buy this kit if Jesse wants to like trade sure. me for my Terminators. Yeah. I'm just going to get the whole kit because even without the <laughs> $100 worth of Terminators. $120 worth of Terminators? Jesus Christ. I think 60, 65, I think they go for It's now. still looking like to be a real good deal. And you Because they said what? Sub 300? Yeah. And you still get the full rule book too. Yeah. Which that's, that's usually still, like 50 to 60, 70 bucks. I don't know what they go for these days. A lot. Because I think we did the basic math, just like spitballing it. And yeah. if it was 300, like 295, was something yeah. like 170 bucks of like, extra models. I think we were guessing around 350 to $400. Yeah. Like, and at 350 and 400, we were still like, well, that's a little pricey for a starter box, but God, it's still a really great deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and GW obviously looked at that and went, you know what? That is a little pricey for a starter box. Let's take it under 300 bucks. Fuck. But Ash Wastes, you stay at that 300 USD, please. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I scratched my head, but 
Good God. Yeah. I guess it's because typically you don't buy Necromoon to buy the platoon. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, you buy that kit and that's it. Yeah, you can. Yeah. That's the whole, literally the whole game. And to be honest, as a starter kit, this is actually still a pretty good, if you really wanted to have a two player game to learn the basics, it actually is a pretty damn good kit. Yeah, because it's 20, 20 tacticals. 20 tacticals. Everybody gets term- five Terminators. Somebody has a Dreadnought. Somebody has a Spartan. Yeah. Which, from what I understand, not a fair fight. But well, <laughs> from what I understand, I people on, uh, on uh, our Discord are saying that the Contemptor is really freaking scary in this game. Yeah. So I don't know. I, it would have to be God tier to survive the amount of las cannons that Spartan can throw at it. I mean, yeah. But I mean, just park up in this corner and just wail on it. Uh, oh, you're real cool. Here's 10 las cannons repeatedly. Uh, and then I'm going to reaction fire again. <laughs> More las cannons. You can't tell me it can't. Mm, okay. I think you can only reaction fire with defensive weapons. Last cannons can't be defensive weapons because they're more than higher than strength six. See, I'm learning the game already. Look at you knowing how the game works. You can't do that, Austin. At least I know what you can't do. <laughs> well, this <laughs> this will actually be a bit of a bit of a miracle because if I do pick up the starter box and let's face it, oh. pick up the starter box, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> it will be the first time I've owned the core <laughs> rules for a 40k game I've played ever. <laughs> Possibly this period end of statement. Um, I have the, so I started playing in third edition. Um, I forget when that was, I was not thinking it was like 11. It was a while ago. Let's not think about it. Um, I acquired the third edition rule book in 2018. (laughs) And (laughs) cause like, you know, like 11 year old me, I didn't have the money to buy the rule book. I just. I learned through osmosis and, you found- <laughs> and I had my army, but we just went with it. Yeah. And that's just sort of how I've played Warhammer ever since. You just picked up for 15 bucks in a, in a bargain bin. Yeah. 20 years after the fact. It's like, oh yeah. Uh, so oh, yeah, that's now, how that rule's supposed to go. Right? Fuck. <laughs> I just, Wayne told me it worked this other way. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll have the actual rule book starting out, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. And let's face it, like there are a lot of people that, you know, don't have a lot of, you know, they've got their $5 a week allowance like I did back in the day. Mm-hmm. They get a starter box for Christmas or something. Then I'm like, oh, well, fuck, I got to buy my army rules. Yeah. And then I want to buy more cool models. I don't want to buy a rule book that I pretty sure my opponent will have with it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that, that's been my thought process for the past. Yeah. We're not going to talk about how long of war gaming is like, I'm pretty sure my opponent will have the core <laughs> rules for a 40 K game. It'll be fine. I'll just believe them. Uh, now I'll have my own. It'll be delightful. Look at look at me go growing up. Of course, you know we got to pick up both Legion books. <laughs> no, no. Oh, as you know, I am <laughs> apparently incapable of doing any army but Space Wolves. No, that's fair. So you only need the so one. I only need the Loyalist Legion book. Yeah. I'll leave the rest for people that can expand their palettes and horizons. Uh, I am going to need that militia book when it comes out, though. That'll happen. Well, I got a podcast to run, damn it, so I need the books. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fair enough. Yeah. See, this is what happens when you're the guy running it, and I'm the guy that's just on here talking about things. If we're wrong about literally anything, they're going to yell at you about it. Yeah. It's the internet. They'll and always Jesse, find something to yell about. And then They'll Jesse will just... Delete that comment from his DMs and move on with life. Yep. A little snort of derision. <laughs> and, uh, all right. Back to real life. <laughs> Hooray. Oh, Lord. But yeah. No, this has been pretty cool. Yeah. And can't come soon enough. Though I watched the movie Click, I know what happens. So I'll, I'll wait my time. <laughs> uh, thank you, Adam Sandler, for explaining. Explaining time travel in only one direction to Jesse. <laughs> uh, but yeah, June June sixth is the date I've been hearing bandied about. One uh, one can only hope. Yeah, that'd be great because we're having a our kind of like farewell to one point on the 29th of May at Battlegrounds. Yeah, yeah, the weekend before. Uh, if you're gonna be 
in the Richmond area. Yeah, it's Memorial Day weekend. You're not doing anything on Monday, right? Hopefully, you got no plans. Yeah, come on down. Roll dice on sa- on Sunday. Yeah, I think Will said. I think we had like what thirty tickets, something like that, and we got like seven, nine left, something yeah. like that. So it's, there's still there's still time, mm-hmm. especially because Jesse is undoubtedly going to get this out like tomorrow. Yeah, pretty much. So if not tonight, yeah. No, no, no. No, maybe later this week. Maybe later this week. Maybe later in the week. All right. Well, hopefully. You got to spread them out a little bit. Hopefully later this week, there'll still be tickets left. Yeah. It'll be a good time. Oh, yeah. I don't know what else to talk about right now. I'm just like. Well, Jesse. A lot we, of excitement. We talked about everything they told us today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just fuck. Can't keep podcasting like this. New content every day. <laughs> Who do they think we are? I just roll up onto everybody's house and say, all right, we're recording today at Austin's place. And just Steve's show up place. at a different person's house every day. We're doing it. We're doing it right now. You yep. can't stop us. Just live. But yeah, I think that's all I got. Yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. We've talked for nearly an hour anyway. Right? Nobody wants to listen to us for longer than an hour. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. If you've got an hour and 20 minute commute, well... Ah, we, we've got a bunch of episodes now. You can find something. Someone asked where's the best place to uh, start with the uh, with the podcast. I told them start with the most recent and keep working your way back until you can't stand the audio quality. That's that's very true. Um, we <laughs> every now and again when we hate ourselves, we put that first podcast, oh, which man. I I keep telling Jesse that we need to take all of the ones before we knew what we were doing and just put them behind a paywall. <laughs> That's we, terrible. No, no, no. That's, that's, we put them behind a paywall, and then whenever one of you poor bastards pays for it to think like, oh, yeah, I'm getting this awesome, like, you know, awesome content, and it's garbage, we don't even, like, we don't even accept the payment. We just <laughs> immediately refund <laughs> with an, ad, like, an additional $5. It's Wait, just like, we're so, we're so sorry to have gotten you into this. <laughs> If they actually download that first episode, just here's five dollars. We're so sorry. We're so sorry. I'm not making. No, that's why you keep it free. We're not paying people to listen. It would just be funny. It would be kind of funny. I'm going to do it though. Just like that sounds like a lot of programming work to refund people for money they haven't spent yet. But right? anyway, once again, thanks for listening to another episode of the Remembrancers Retreat. If you like us, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at rr30k podcast. You can go to our website, rr30k.com, to find all our episodes, as well as some homebrewed stuff like the Battlefleet Heresy Compendium. Yeah, it's good time. It's good time. Mm-hmm. FAQ coming out, inshallah, Yeah, soon. I feel like we've been saying soon for a while now. But, yeah, you but know, now, now I have time off. So now it's actually it. soon. Because it was like last year. Like, we didn't get the, uh, the second book out until I was on vacation. It's like, all right, and dragged you guys. Like, we're going to finish this. We're going to do it. And we did it. <laughs> we're doing it again. It'll be good. Yeah. And that right. Yeah. It'll be good. <laughs> uh, if you really enjoy this program and would like to support us, go over to patreon.com forward slash rr30k podcast. And we have to, I need now need to make an announcement. Yeah. That content is good. <laughs> <laughs> you will not be refunded and given an apology check for signing up. As always, we'd like to thank all of our patrons, starting with our Legion Praetors, Alex Self, Chap Lanisar, Chris Mack, Gardner Nut Tree of Woe, Joe from Music City Heresy, Kevin, Luke Rizzuto, Matthew Boyce, Michael Tisdall, Mr. Baldwick, Nick Quenga, Rena the Floof, Sar Luther, Taco Tuesday or Bus 22 Rock and Roll McDonald's, and What's Ligma. Our Legion Centurions, Aaron Maynard, Andrew N., Dave Jones, Duncan, Ed, M. Tanzer, Gore Crow, Nick Hilda, Richard Bork, Scott LeMay, and Void Imperatrix. And finally, our Legion Sergeants Agrippina, Aircraft Terrier, Emily O'Hare, Garrett Lowe, Jay DeSales, Jay Grammaticus, Jonathan Crane, Carl, Nick Gillen, Noah Atkins, The Zoy, and Travis Smith. Once again, thank you all for your support. We greatly appreciate it. My name is Jesse. Once again, I was here with Austin. Keep those dice rolling, and we'll see you next time. Bye.